Still battling this cold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chad Novak, and I am, I am here representing, representing the Saskatchewan Taxpayers Advocacy Group, which is a grassroots organization proudly standing up for the rights of individual taxpayers. I am amazed, and I want to say thank you for everybody turning out tonight. I'm here to address the 20, 2017 revised City of Regina budget. <coughs> Pardon me. I want to first extend my sincerest gratitude and appreciation to our Premier, Mr. Bradwell. Yes, I said that. Now I'm sure many of you are thinking, Chad, why on earth would you want to thank our Premier for putting us into this predicament? Well, let me explain. First off, let me be very clear. The budget released on March 22nd was probably the scariest budget that I have ever been witness to in my 41 years on this, in this great province. From drastic cuts to our most vulnerable, to further tax breaks to corporate friends, it was honestly light years beyond where even my wildest imaginations could have thought that the wall government would have dared put us in. Now, with that being said, it is only because of this budget that the general public seemed to have finally woken up from the slumber of putting unwavering trust in their governments, including the city of Regina. It is because of this budget that for the first time in a long, long time, there have been some outstandingly honest and frank comments by city councillors who I <laughs> never would have expected them from. The one that sticks out in my head is that of Councillor Hawkins with his remark of this budget being like a thief in the night. Now for that comment alone, my perception of this councillor is forever changed for the better of course. Now onto the subject of the revised budget, which in my opinion is completely backwards thinking from what it should be focusing on. There seems, to be have, there seems to have been minimal effort put forward by this administration. And I mean, it seems to have started out promising, where they had actually attempted meaningful action by considering real spending cuts. But unfortunately, they missed the boat entirely on where the real spending revisions ought to be focused on. For example, as of May 2016, the city of Regina has over 700 employees making six figures. And it's no secret that there are several layers of management within the city of Regina organization. This has long been criticized by city workers. Now for me, this would have been the first place that I would be looking at to save some real money. Secondly, speaking of overpaying, how about we take a look at the growing number of sole source contracts that are being awarded, where questions have been raised by the private industries as to the validity of the pricing of these projects. From the glockenspiel, to the recycling, to the food and beverage service at the stadium, to the Pacer ballpark relocation, which is something new that nobody has heard of yet. There are millions of tax dollars being expended with little to no accountability from anyone but internal staff. This warrants immediate attention from an independent third party with no conflict of interest perceived or otherwise. Next, let's actually look at reducing budgets where they continually come to you asking for five to seven percent increases year over year with little to no public questioning such as the Regina Police Service. All due respect, Mr. Bray. With, yes, I know they are being asked to take a very minimal hit tonight but that does not impact the long-term financial outlook in any meaningful way. Instead of, the, instead of the RPS saying, we need this money to operate, why don't you respond to them with, you know what, we're giving you this amount. You have one minute to go. I don't agree. Yeah. Fine. We're giving you this amount. If you can't operate with that, figure to make it happen. You do this all the time with the great community organizations who come to you asking for property tax breaks or grants, so why don't you do it with your own organizations? Finally, let's consider the ever-growing financial reserves. Where over the past three years alone, the city of Virginia has realized nearly $30 million in surpluses. Keeping in mind, this is over and above the already budgeted transfers to reserves. Now this tells me that you are significantly overcharging citizens already. After all of those avenues have been exhausted, then and only then, should you be looking at cutting essential services like transit on stat holidays, 
yard waste recycling, or aggravation transit services. 20 seconds left. And only in the most extreme circumstances should you ever be okay with coming back to these taxpayers for more money. I thank you for your time this evening, and I know I won't have any questions. It's called respect, sir. We're both not being gallery, please. Questions of the uh, delegation. Any questions? No, no questions. Thank you very much.